Hello, I'm Bob Paget, exploring waterways. So why on earth would I be stood next to this very busy road? Just three miles west of Stroud, the town of Stonehouse provides off-street parking and good road and rail transport connections. The main road is traffic calmed and a former coaching inn is now a medical practice. Mentioned in the Doomsday Book, it has welcoming restaurants, public houses and local shops. This sign, displaying the nearby Nutshell Bridge across the Stroudwater Navigation, demonstrates the close association of having an historic waterway running nearby. And there are more surprises with these flower tubs. When the chapel of Wycliffe College School was damaged by fire in 1939, leaving the nave completely gutted, timbers from abandoned river barges were used for repairs. Those barges were most likely Severn Trows, which had come to the end of their useful lives and were lying in the field to the north of the canal near Ryford possibly dragged out of the canal by Brunstons, who specialised in heavy haulage and recovery, and were still trading in the 1970s. Horse Trough Road Junction had become a major traffic bottleneck by the 1970s. Within months of the formation of the Stroudwater Canal Society, there were announcements that an Ebley Bypass would be constructed the new bypass would cut through the canal at low level, completely blocking it. And members wrote with passion to newspapers about the proposed loss of canal and towpath. The Canal Society made their own survey of the site, met with the Road Planning Authority and was not met favourably. This was possibly the first time there had been any objections to a road scheme in the area. Although work had already commenced on the canal at Bowbridge, it was important that the Canal Society started work in this area. The company was hostile to anything being done and it took virtually a year before any permission was granted to work yes. anywhere on the Stroudwater. And this was the first place we started, wasn't That's it? That's right, yeah. yes. Yeah. And it was an ideal site because yeah. there was a lot to do. There was trees yeah. to clear, yeah. there were coping stones to get out, uh, there was timber to remove, mm. and all the debris out of the lot yeah. to, yeah. to get yeah. out. Yeah. To the east, the canal was already partly filled in and was a vehicle route to refuse tip. It looked so bad that I did not film it. And when I wasn't filming, I was very involved with the physical work. Even on a Sunday, the roundabout is very busy. Fortunately, road planners saw sense, and Stonehouse has not only benefited from a better road system, but now has a beautiful canal. This is a place of tranquillity. The offside field is currently being used for depositing canal dredgings. The locally manufactured single track railway bridge is now repurposed as a walkway and cycleway. The last time I crossed this bridge was on a special excursion train from Dunbridge to Western Supermare. It was the late 1950s and passenger services had long since ended. When the Fowler locomotive pulled into Dudbridge station and then ran round the coaches, I remember my father saying, it'll never make it. 
a place of former wharves supplying coal and timber to local industry. This is a place of memories and discovery. A group providing boat mobility experience more next to the historic Ryford Coal Pen. It was built by mill owner Sir Samuel Stevens Marling. Coal was unloaded from large Severn troughs using barrows and timber planks into the cutout shapes in the wall. English heritage aerial images taken on different dates between the wars show varying quantities of coal mounded there, a clue to the changing financial climate of the 1930s. When you have grown up alongside an abandoned canal and have heard stories from your parents and grandparents of trading craft on that canal, it becomes an important part of you. My visit today brought back many memories from childhood and from early canal working parties, which were only a short walk from home. It proved to me that different transport systems can coexist and it gave me greater understanding of the important role of the canal in the past and for the environment and in the community today.